The gigantic pharmacy chain Walgreens released a blog post this week. <laughs> Who knew that that's a thing, that Walgreens has a blog? Uh, and it was about weed. And it signals a potential policy shift moving forward. So the piece was called Clarifying Clinical Cannabis, and it said the following. Research has indicated it may impair your lungs, memory, and judgment. However, research has also shown marijuana provides pain relief in ways traditional pain medicines don't. Medical marijuana can improve appetite and relieve nausea in those who have cancer, and it may help relieve symptoms such as muscle stiffness in people who have multiple sclerosis. Okay, so they go on, and uh, they keep giving positives. The positives uh, way outweigh the negatives. So, yet again, what this means is the snowball effect continues. Uh, and to add to this, there was a new poll that was released this week that said 56% of Americans support legalization. Now, that number is actually a little, little lower than some recent polls that we covered. Some polls have it as high as 58% of Americans want to legalize marijuana. And get this, this is a devastating number that I've never seen before. 71% of people under the age of 35 support legalization. 71%. Damn. Okay, those kids are the future. Not really kid if you're 34, 32. But they're the future. And you think that number is going to go back in the other direction? <laughs> no, if anything, it's going to keep climbing. Dude, it's over. Game, set, match. It's just a matter of time, man. It's just a matter of time until we see this total shift on drug policy. I mean, they're barely keeping it together at the moment. The drug warriors... Think about it. We have, what is it, four states now where it's uh, legal recreationally. We have over 20 states where it's legal medicinally. Now, technically, all of that is illegal because federal law overrides state law, and at the federal level, marijuana is illegal. Um, but there's a, a, a change in the zeitgeist. There's this mindset shift where even if, and it's certainly possible, you get a president who's just an utter dick and he decides, we're going to crack down on all those states that have it legal because they can do that because the laws allow them to do that at the federal level. Even if that happens, man, you're going to see such a gigantic backlash where people are going to say, uh, no, we're not going to let you do that. And now there's going to be this, you know, massive movement where we all get together and at the state level and at the federal level, there's so much pressure put on the government where they don't have a choice but to change the laws. And that's where we're at right now. It in all seriousness, it kind of reminds me of gay marriage. How with gay marriage, it's like you go back to like 04 and there was like no movement anywhere on the issue. And the polls were actually still against gay marriage. But then it started gaining a little bit of uh, steam and then... All of a sudden, when the argument was actually made and people heard it, they went, oh yeah, why not? Gay marriage, what the fuck? Why would we not? That We're, we're fine with that, who cares? And now the overwhelming, over 60% of Americans are like, yeah, gay marriage is the way to go. And we were able to change the laws at the Supreme Court. Never mind, we were going state by state, but then they won a Supreme Court case and now it's legal everywhere. You don't think it's going to happen with weed? Oh, it's going to happen with weed. And what better evidence is there than... I don't know, has there ever been another substance that was temporarily banned in the United States and then there was a massive backlash and then eventually it became legal and now it's super popular and super common? Oh, yes, we have alcohol. Prohibition, we had prohibition, it was illegal in the country, but guess what? The black market thrived, it didn't go away, the mafia got more powerful, and then eventually we reversed it. Same thing right now. Uh, Marijuana is uh, illegal, drug cartels are getting more powerful, the black market is thriving. Well, how do you reverse that? Legalize, tax, and regulate. So there's definitely been a shift in the mindset across the country, and I think it's just a matter of time until we win. And look for this. Here's what you have to look for. When the pro-marijuana team has more lobbying money than the anti-marijuana team, TikTok, it's over. Because... Again, this is the same thing we saw with gay marriage, where the evangelical Christians were able to raise more money, and they're against gay marriage, and they were able to sway the, the laws in the country. But then at a certain point, the LGBT lobby outraised them, outfunded them, they had more money, and then we ended up winning on that front. So, as of right now, 
you know, you have alcohol companies, for example, tobacco companies, uh, you know, the DEA. These are people who are against it. Well, now we have a booming marijuana industry. And guess who's starting to get involved in the marijuana industry? Wall Street. <laughs> now, we all know we don't want Wall Street to influence our politics in any way, and we're fighting to get money out of politics and get a constitutional amendment, so they don't. So no private money can influence our politicians. But this is a really rare circumstance where <laughs> potheads and people who are pro-drug should be cheering on Wall Street. Why? Because they're now aligning with marijuana companies, and that means that they're in their lobbying of the government. Well, there's always they're always asking for shit. Hey, I give you money. I scratch your back. You scratch mine. How long until, you know, one of the things is, and while you're at it, change the scheduling of marijuana. And while you're at it, fight to get it legal. So when you have big money on your side, then, then it really is a matter of time until uh, marijuana is legal. So it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when.